It may surprise you that I'd never owned a Lionel F3 until about two years ago. I found this motorized Santa Fe locomotive on eBay, and it needed some work, but the price was right. Since I've taken ownership, it's become a rolling test bed for repairs, restoration, and modifications. The first thing I did after removing the shell was to see why it ran in only one direction. That turned out to be an easy fix, as the reversing unit had just worked itself loose and wasn't being properly grounded. The next thing I wanted to deal with was the scruffy looking frame. Even Lionel equipment from the 1970s or 80s is pretty easy to work on. It comes apart easily and logically, the base was repainted, and it all went back together pretty smoothly. Basic, simple, reliable, and user-friendly are just a few of the positive words that I'd use to describe this locomotive. If you'd like to see this process in more detail, I've done a few other videos about restoring Lionel frames, and those can be found in the official Bob's Workshop archives. The factory lighting worked just fine, but I decided to switch over to LEDs. I made a mounting bracket from styrene and used a bridge rectifier to convert the track's AC current to DC, and I kept all of the old parts just in case I ever wanted to return it to its original look. Phase 3 is next, because from the base down, it looks brand new. But there are multiple nicks and scratches to the silver and red paint, and the nose decal is pretty rough. The Santa Fe shell was stashed away for a while, and the base found a temporary home beneath a Lionel F3 decorated for the Bicentennial's Preamble Express. I was never quite sure what to do with the Santa Fe shell. So far, it was original, and I could probably live with the nicked paint, but the nose decal was the true sticking point. Not only was a large portion missing, but the red paint behind the decal had been damaged too, so a new decal would only be half of a fix. This is a pretty tough old decal, but with a little 400 grit wet sanding, it eventually disappears. And while I'm at it, I'll also use wet sanding to blend in any nicks or scratches into the surrounding areas, both in the red and in the silver.
ago, I refurbished the shell of a Lino Alco that also had Santa Fe graphics. I didn't need to repaint all of the red, just the repaired front apron and a few other small nicks. That's when I discovered Ford Red from Rust-Oleum, which to my eyes was a perfect match to the color that Lionel used. The nose of this F3 shell was not exactly the same. It was a cooler, darker red, so I decided to completely cover the old color with Rust-Oleum's Ford Red. The Alco and the F3 will be near each other on the shelf, so they should match, right? Yeah, right. I'd like to avoid a raised paint line where the new color meets the old, so I'm spraying very light coats. It's not always easy, because I need to spray enough paint to end up with a glossy finish while spraying as little as possible near the masking tape. But it turned out pretty good. My work here is not done, my friends. I need to fix the rear areas too, and I saved that color for last. Because of the metallic finish, I learned years ago not to mask any resprayed silver paint. The tape would actually lift away sections of the little sparkly flakes and leave blemishes. So now, silver is always the last color I spray. I should also mention that this isn't actually silver, but aluminum from Rust-Oleum. Its color and satin finish blend in almost perfectly with the original Lionel paint. I wanted to repaint as little as possible and keep the graphics and lettering untouched, but if I had to, I'd still guess that about 80% of the silver, or aluminum, is new but they look good together. So I was able to keep the black and yellow stripes as well as the lettering on the sides, but I had to bite the bullet and buy replacement decals for the nose. And these came from eBay. Three bucks plus 550 for shipping isn't too bad. And these turned out to be very nice decals. Avoid the ones that are printed onto white decal paper, which you could make for yourself at home. This is a reproduction, but it's very close to what Lionel would have used on the original. That's not half bad. It's a perfect fit, plus the edges were already pre-trimmed, so you can barely even tell that it's a decal. I like it a lot.
These are a few current listings from eBay in August of 2023. Some sellers can be a little greedy, but a fair market price for one of these seems to be about $100. But you could always spend a little bit more if you wanted matching dummy units. My $55 Santa Fe F3 turned out to cost a little bit more because of paint, decals, and whatever my time is worth, but it was a project I enjoyed, and I'm really happy with the result. saying that every collector should have a Santa Fe F3, but it really is the iconic image you get when you close your eyes and think of Lionel toy trains. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been Bob's Workshop. Take care. Bye.